Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I'm Mark. Over the last couple of days we've watched Simon look at his solve or our solve of a couple of times puzzles and today um, we'll have a look at my solve of today's times puzzle which happily for me was a more accessible puzzle than the last two which have been quite difficult. So. Um, we'll call up myself, we'll have a look at how it went, and I'll make some comments as we go. First of all, one, let's start with a good tip, in my opinion. Um, I think this one is very useful. It, when beginning a puzzle, and we'll go back to how to get started at all, um, you need to solve one clue cold to get anything in the grid. and. Um, it's always very helpful. A lot of the advice I think is correct is to look for a clear indicator of wordplay. So some sort of anagram indicator or an insertion. Once you've found that, you could probably find work out which end of the clue the definition appears. We must remember the basic cryptic rule that there's always a definition at one end or the other of the clue. And that may help know what the definition is with the wordplay indicator established, one may be able to think of some um, ideas for what the wordplay indicator is doing. Once you've got one word in, the game changes. And I think then the best thing to do is to use the letters in the grid to guide one's thoughts about possible definitions and words that might fit given the letter that you've got. So I think the first clue, try and find a wordplay indicator, work out what it might be doing. And once you've got that, once you've got one clue cracked, um, move on to the letters that that's given you in the grid because they can be very helpful and they steer your thinking. Um, one thing I would generally advise, and it's something very noticeable both about the way Simon and I solve and move around the grid, is don't get too hung up on a single clue. You can waste a lot of time thinking about one clue and end up going around in circles in your head, probably on the wrong track. It's worth having a look at a lot of clues, like give, give each clue, for me it's five or 10 seconds, for most people it's probably about 20 or 25 seconds thought, and then try another one if it doesn't yield, yield anything. That's a general pair of tips then to, to start us off, and I think you'll see those in evidence as we, as we go through my solve. So, starting up the solve here, um, you'll see that the time began at about two minutes and three seconds while I was uh, sizing the grid and working out how to record it and so on. So, uh, I'm not really going to count that in my overall time. Now, one across, the clue was follow on to make certain when down on runs. Now, even though I said um, look for a clear wordplay indicator. I'm not going to claim there is one in that clue. Um, it turns out that when down on means to remove R for runs. Simon's already mentioned that cricket abbreviations get used and that's another one of them. Um, but the definition was very clear. Follow on in five letters. The only word I can think of for that immediately is ensue. And I could see immediately that ensure minus the R for runs would leave ensue. So it was a nice, easy solve. And as I suggested, the first thing to do is to use those letters that that's given in the grid, an E and S and an E and one, two and three down. And I looked at three down, which um, had clearly some indication of an anagram in it and a definition to do with voting rights, um, enfranchisement looked like it answered the, uh, it used the letters that were supplied for the anagram, and I put that in. So that gave me a start, and then we moved on to some of these other letters, some of these other clues. Um, looking at 23 across, that was, I thought, quite a good solve for me, but again, the clue is join train in the middle to return, and I had an E at the end of five letters. Now, the wordplay there is extremely complicated, in my view, for quite a short word. It's a complicated idea, but I looked at the definition of join, 
and unite came to mind as a possible synonym for that. So then I just had to justify why a train in the middle to return might give unite. And I was lucky enough to be able to think of the synonym for train, which is retinue. And retinue in the middle is E-T-I-N-U. And returning that gives you unite. That proved that my, my original guess, as it were, on what join might be was correct. Now, nine across here, awfully fine story never to be told. At this stage in the solve, I'd already looked at that clue several times. Well, two or three times. And every time I'd assumed that awfully fine story meant that it was an anagram. The whole answer would be an anagram of fine story, which is a useful nine letters. And the letters I was getting in the grid didn't say any different. But in the end, I realized that there was no possible anagram of that. And eventually I worked out that it was just fine that was becoming awfully, I-N-E-F. And the story was a fable to give ineffable, unable to be believed. Um, so sometimes, again, you have to rethink what you've been thinking. Go Come at it from a different angle, like 10 across. Um, I was quite amused at 4 across, which was a clue suggesting that the solver, it's a novel, but the solver might have this at the moment. And uh, I had an H at the start, and the only thing the solver's got at the moment, potentially, is a crossword puzzle, really. So hard times sprung to mind as the name of the novel. It's quite ironic. It's not a very hard times crossword in my view. So apologies if you think it is, but I think for experienced solvers, there's quite a lot to get one's hand on. Now here at 17 across, I saw the seizure of debt as goods. Now that's a very long phrase that doesn't look like wordplay. So that seemed to be the definition. And I know the word distrain, but I wasn't quite sure what noun comes from distrain. So I filled in distrain couldn't quite see in the clue how the wordplay was working. And I just waited to get some help to find out if it was distrainture or distrainment or distraining. That wouldn't quite fit, but some other possibility. So I moved back on to the other clues and just waited for a bit of help from uh, 15 or 16 down to make sure I could find out what the answer was. Now, it's worth noting in this puzzle, I really don't think there's a lot of detail or general knowledge that's needed. There are a few words that aren't in everyday use, such as distrainment, I suppose, but almost all of the words are in everyday use, and um, very little general knowledge is required in the clues. Four down, I think, is the one exception I'd point out where a clue for hobo used hob to mean a ferret. Now, that's pretty old use of hob, but that's what it does mean. So here we are, finished in 7.29, um, and given the kind of two minutes and a few seconds at the beginning, um, I thought that was a solve in just under five and a half minutes. Reasonably pleased with that, but as I say, it was a pretty straightforward crossword. Um, I hope you know these few tips may have helped you. Please leave comments about what you'd like to see us referring to when we go through these solves, and uh, thanks for joining us.